Ben-Hadad was the king of Syria, but he was also a man that was known for his shrewd abilities for military strategy. There were occasions when he would tell his men, we're going to camp here. With the idea we'll wait for Israel to come by, we'd be able to ambush them, as it were. But what he didn't know was every time he made a plan like that, then God would advise the king of Israel, let him know what was happening. And it happened numerous times, evidently, and Ben-Hadad was upset by that, and he called his men together, and he asked them the question, who is it among us that's against us? That is, he wanted to know, who is it that's betraying us to Israel and letting them know my plans before we can ever carry them out? And his men told him, it's not one of us, but it's a prophet by the name of Elisha. He knows everything that you're planning, and he's the one that reveals to the king what's going on. And so then Ben-Hadad sent out a great army to go and to capture Elijah and to bring him back. And on that occasion when the army arrived, one of Elijah's servants had gone out of the house, and he saw this great army out there, and he was terrified by what he saw, and he ran in, and he told uh, Elisha about it. And Elisha said to him, Do not fear, for those that are with us are more than those who are with them. And then Elisha offered up a brief prayer unto God. And in that prayer, he simply asked that God might open the eyes of that servant that he could see. And God answered that prayer. When the servant looked up, he saw round about them an army of chariots of fire that God had sent down for them to protect Elisha. And then Elisha made the statement to him that he did not need to fear because of what God would do for them, that God was with them to care for them. And that was so important for that young man to understand that, to know that those who are with us are more than those who are against us. And it gave to him great courage. But, of course, the story didn't end there. Uh, we know what happened, how that Elisha also prayed to God that that army might be stricken blind, and they were. And he went out and he told them, this is not the place, and we're not the ones you're looking for. And he led them away to the army of Israel where they were completely surrounded by arm, Israel's army. And then he prayed again for them that their eyes might be opened. And when they opened their eyes and saw they were surrounded by that army of Israel, then they were the ones that were terrified. And the Israelite leader said to him, Shall we kill them? Shall we kill them? And Elisha said, Would you kill those that you have taken as prisoners in war? No, he said, Set food before them and drink, and then send them on their way to their master." Could there be anything more foolish in all of life to do that? You've got your enemy. You've got them captured. You've got them completely surrounded. They're at your mercy, and you're told to give them something to eat, give them something to eat, and then send them back on the way to their master. But that's what they did. And the Bible tells us that the bands of the Syrians came no more to raid in Israel. In the book of Romans, Paul had talked about how we need to treat our enemies. And Paul says that we are to, you know, heap coals of burning fire on their heads. That is, you do good to them so that they're ashamed of what they were planning on doing to you. And that's the way you have of making friends out of your enemies. And it worked on that occasion. But there's something more about this that I want to look at this night to talk about just briefly. And that was the statement when he, he asked God might open the eyes of his servant. I really believe that in every generation that we need to pray that prayer to God, that God would open our eyes. There's so many things we need to see, so many things we need to see about God, about who He is. And I've been writing about that some in the bulletin articles lately. But there's all something that we need to see about ourselves. We need to pray that God would open our eyes so we could see us for who we really are and for what we really are. And that is that we are individuals who are guilty of sin, who do not have the ability to provide for our own salvation to understand that we are dependent upon God and God alone who can answer our prayers and grant to us the forgiveness of sins that we need. When the Apostle Paul was sent out by God to preach to the Gentiles, he was given this message to go to them, to teach them in order to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God, that they might receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. They need to have a light given to them of the gospel to open their eyes and see. 
We need to open our eyes to see ourselves, the situation we're in. Tonight, if you're here as an individual who's never become a child of God, I pray that you would see yourself for what you are, that is, an individual like all of us, guilty of sin, and therefore one who is dependent upon God for the forgiveness you need and for the salvation that only God can give. If that's the case, then tonight we would encourage you, according to what God's Word says, that you would believe in Jesus, repent of your sins, confess Him before men, and be buried with Him in baptism to have your sins forgiven and stand in a right relationship with God again. Tonight, if you're here as one of God's children, but you know you haven't been living faithful to God the way you should, you haven't been obedient in your daily lives as you need to be, then we would encourage you and pray for you that your eyes might be open to see that and to see the need that you have to repent of those sins and pray to God for the forgiveness you need and understand that God will give it. Just as we see in the case in Acts chapter 8 and verse 22, when Simon the sorcerer, who had become a child of God, later sins, and he's told by Peter, your money perish with you, and he said to Peter, pray with me and for me, that what you said may not befall me. And so tonight, if you recognize your situation as one who is lost from God, we pray then that you would respond in obedience to his will to make things right with God, that you might know forgiveness and the salvation he offers. If we can help you in any way in your obedience to God tonight, we would ask you to please let that be known by coming forward while together we stand and while we sing.